Watch where you're going. Hey, screw you! Your wrench nearly cracked my head open. Oh no! It's not damaged, is it? That's my lucky wrench. Yeah, lucky it didn't kill me. When's this upgrade gonna be finished anyway? Look, kid, I just go where they tell me. Every night another power surge. Every morning another part of the grid fry. And I'm out here fixing it. Do I get any thanks? No. What's causing all the outages? At the moment, a little red-headed girl. Now throw me my wrench, kid. Looks like I have all the leverage. So tell me, what exactly is taking so long with these repairs? Apart from shoddy workmanship, that is. Hey, we're busting our butts to keep your lights on. These lines should be lasting for decades, but they're burning out after just a few weeks. It's the strangest thing. Anyway, toss me my wrench. But be careful. It's a family heirloom. But what could possibly be using that much power? You're killing me, little girl. Arthurton's a tiny town. The mines are practically shut down. So what could it be? Surely someone must know. All I know is I got three more jobs today, and I can't finish any of them without my wrench. So, will you please just give it back already? Fine. I've got bigger fish to fry. Thanks, kid. As Jenny stepped out of the dark forest, she saw warm sunlight reflecting off the cool lake. And next to that, something even cooler. <laughs> Keith Strousbury. <laughs> Come on, Keith! Dance like you beat it! <laughs> Not so much grinding! <laughs> oh, Keith, what are you doing? Not everyone saw it, but to Jenny, there was something special about Keith. He's just happy being himself. Nothing seemed to bother him. Not even having to dance in a costume for a dollar an hour. But Jenny was not so laid back. Not when it comes to standing up for a friend. Especially her only friend. <laughs> I think there's been enough dancing for one day, don't you? Hey, Jenny. Hello, Susan. Actually, I prefer Susie. Busy laughing while others earn a living, Susan? Not everyone's got your dad's money, I guess. Jenny, hi! Tall and handsome, with intense, mysterious eyes. Cool should have been his middle name, instead of Tarquin. But Keith was so cool, he didn't even mind. Give me one minute. I'm just finishing my... Sure. Don't let me interrupt your work. My shift ends... In 15 minutes. I know. I'm early. I'm meeting a client over at the dock. Paid case. Could be big. Real big. Couldn't be as big as her head. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's really... Impressive? Maybe. All I care about is keeping this town crime-free. <laughs> the only crime here is that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Back in a minute, Keith. I'll have the usual. Straight up and hot. Nothing fancy. You got it. How about now? Move it to the left a bit. What's he doing up there? Not now, kid. We're busy. Any better? No, keep going. No. Yes, it's working. Hold it right there. That's what all the fuss is about. Not this guy again. What is that? Whatever it is, he's not my music. Maybe it's jazz. Shh. I'm trying to listen. You shush. 
I'm the DJ. I'm in charge. When's this party getting started, boys? Oh, uh, just a few more minutes. Uh, how are we supposed to dance to this? I think we're losing them. Another station must be interfering with the signal. But there aren't any other stations in Arthurton. Wait, all these wires must be acting as a giant antenna. Jenny listened closely to the mysterious transmission. It was like no other radio broadcast she'd heard before. Hold it steady! Sorry, I'm trying! That's just getting worse. You might as well come down. No, wait! I can almost make out what they're saying. But just like that, the sound faded away. What did you do? That's no use. Come on. We gotta get this equipment back to the AV department by six. Jenny was so lost in contemplation, she'd almost forgotten the case at hand. My client. I'm supposed to meet her at the dock. Danger. No swimming. Sounds safe. Hmm. How do I get this ladder down? That didn't work. That didn't work. Aha! Got you this time, you slippery fella! Ah, oh, shucks. Just another boot. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Humdrum. Oh my! If it isn't little Jenny LeClue! What a glorious day, don't you think? As far as Jenny was concerned, small talk was like a second pair of underpants. Uncomfortable and completely unnecessary. But Mom always says, create a good rapport and they'll reveal everything to you. So she gave it a shot. How's the fishing? Oh, the fishing's great, but the catching is bad. All I'm getting are old boots and strange bits of metal. But just look out there, Jenny. She's got that wonderful afternoon glow. No one knew why the lake glowed at night, and few were brave enough to swim its murky waters. What lay beneath its depths was the stuff of myth and legend. Somewhere out there lies the giant red herring, or so they say. But no one's ever caught one. Sounds fishy to me. Well, if she's out there, I'll catch her. Someday. Great. Well, now that we have a good rapport, where can I find Mrs. Humdrum? <laughs> well, she's down there on the ridge. Only one problem. I think the ladder is broken. Ah, yes. There's a knack to it. First you shake it, then you kick it, and then you push it. Sounds unnecessarily complicated. I'll join you down there in a bit. Just have to sort my tackle out. the trick. Mrs. Humdrum, I presume? Oh, hello! Yeah, you? I'm the private detective you contacted. Jenny LeClue, at your service. I'm here to solve your case. Who is it, Dan? It's Jenny, dear, the LeClue girl. She doesn't see so well without her glasses. Oh, hello, Jenny. I'm afraid I don't see so well without my glasses. Nothing wrong with her hearing, though. What did she say? I said there's nothing wrong with your hearing, dear. Oh, no, thank you. 
I've already eaten. I believe you have a case for me? We do! We, we do! Great! So what's the trouble? Haunted by the ghost of a former lover? Worried you're being poisoned by a mad uncle? Something so dark and gruesome I can't even begin to imagine the horror? Well, I've lost my reading glasses. Oh. And there it was. A real case. A confounding mystery to challenge Jenny's brilliant mind. <sighs> I thought this was finally going to be a good one. What do you think, Jenny? Can you help? Sure, Mr. Humdrum. I'm gonna need to ask you a few questions. Looks freshly blow-dried. A professional job. Your hair looks lovely today, Mrs. Humdrum. Is that a new style? Thank you! I had it done yesterday. Dan didn't notice. They call it the Queen's Quaff. Well, it's certainly big. And expensive. But I'm worth it, Dan. Who could put a price on that beautiful head of hair? You're not so bad yourself, hot stuff. Gross. I've never been interrogated before. This is such fun. Jenny recognized the distinctive indentations left behind by a pair of spectacles. She must have been wearing them recently. You still have marks from your glasses on the bridge of your nose. You probably lost them within the last day or two. Oh, I never would have thought of that. When do you last remember wearing them? I'm really not sure. Dan? You had them at your Tuesday book club. Oh, yes. We're reading Fifty Shady Graves. You really are very good. The best. How long have you been solving mysteries for... I'll ask the questions, thank you. Jenny had often snuck through the hole in the fence at Grubman's to watch the races. She could understand why the dogs ran so hard. They were chasing the promise of food. What the adults were chasing was less relatable. I notice you're a gambler, Mrs. Humdrum. You've been to the Greyhound races. That was yesterday. We always go to Grubman's on Wednesday. Interesting. What's next? Fingerprints? Oh, polygraph test? It's like you're reading my mind. That's a large hole. She must have caught it on something. Did you have trouble climbing down the ladder, Mrs. Humdrum? Why, yes I did. How on earth did you know? There's a tear in your pants pocket. Well, what do you know? I didn't realize these pants even had pockets. Have you figured it out yet? The suspense is killing me. you often carry a pair of binoculars? She doesn't go anywhere without them. I presume you don't wear your glasses when you use the binoculars. No, I can't get my eyes close enough to the eye cups. Hmm, I see. Did you take your binoculars with you to the races? Of course. Those critters are so tiny I can't keep up without my binoculars. Interesting. I feel like you know more about me than I do. <laughs> I 
I expect you're finding it difficult to paint without your glasses. Oh no, I never wear them when I paint. I like to feel the canvas, to interpret the colors. She's an incredible painter. You should have her paint you. Thanks, but I don't mix business with pleasure. You are so thorough. Any more questions? I think I have everything I need to wrap this one up. Where are Gail's glasses? There's a big hole in her pocket, but Gail didn't even know her pants had pockets. So it's unlikely that she would keep her glasses in them. Gail was at the races last night. She had to remove her glasses to use the binoculars. Gail also had her hair cut recently. It's fluffy and big and could easily hide a small object. Solving a complex mystery like the case of the missing glasses was tough work. But now came the most satisfying part, delivering the dramatic denouement. Let's review the facts. One, not only do you love your binoculars, you've come to depend on them for bird watching, greyhound watching, basically anything far away watching. That's true. I immediately sensed the two optical devices, your binoculars and glasses, were incompatible. Thus, to use one, you had to remove the other. Fascinating! Fact two. Yesterday, you changed your hairstyle. I did! Though fun, it was also impractical. And so tall that it could easily conceal a small object. I see where this is going. Please, don't interrupt. After much research, deliberation, and debate, I've concluded there is only one place the missing glasses could be. They've been on your head the whole time. Oh, so they are. Right there on top of my head. Incredible. What a talent. They're always in the last place you look, aren't they? A master detective in the making. What would we have done without you? <clears throat> Gail, don't forget to pay the girl. Oh, of course, silly me. You must be rewarded generously for all your hard work. Now don't spend it all in one place. Thanks. I'll do my best. Are you ready, Keith? Wow, what an amazing detective. Glasses on her head. Hmm, who could have guessed? Oh, you heard. Whatever would we do without Master Investigator Jenny LeClue? I thought it was pretty cool, Jenny. And a whole nickel! You must be so excited. Yeah, that's more than her mom makes in a month. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's all just... Hey, Jenny, my grandma called. She wants her sweater back. <laughs> oh, how wonderful it was to joke around with friends. I've had enough of this.
application of makeup. Hair drawn over face. Wear sunglasses even at night. You're trying to distract from something. A lazy eye, perhaps? What? No! How do you... Shut up, Jenny! You don't know anything! Wow, Jenny. That was cruel. Who even says something like that? Aw, don't cry, Veronica. She's just a weirdo nobody! Jenny, let who? And... And the case of the missing... Friends! <laughs> uh, yeah. Good one, Veronica. Come on. Let's get you home. Are you coming, Susie? Thanks for the coffee, Keith. And the extra sugar. Of course. It's... Nothing special at all and the same thing he does for everyone? Oh, okay. See you around, Keith. Well, that went well. Shall we? Uh, yeah. I've got no customers now anyway. Nothing exciting ever happens here. I'm so tired of these simple cases. Ugh. How am I supposed to become a real detective if there are no real crimes to solve? You know that old lady? <clears throat> Darn. Thanks, Keith. But it was stupid, and everyone knew it. Including your girlfriend. She's not my... And you really mustn't let them treat you like that. You should stick up for yourself. Uh-huh. They don't mean anything. Sometimes you just gotta speak up and say how you feel. Well, I... You can't just let people walk all over you, Keith. Okay. <clears throat> it doesn't matter anyway. Nothing's gonna change. Not in this ghost town. <clears throat> it's not so bad. Don't you ever wonder what it would be like to live somewhere else? Oh, um, not really. Who am I kidding? There is nowhere else. Not for miles. Shucks. I see practice is going well. Is your dad still pressuring you to play? Well... Come on, Keith. You hate basketball. And tough love. But you're the worst player on the team. But not the worst. Well, on the bench, anyway. Why don't you just tell him you don't want to play anymore? It's... It's Strawberry tradition. That's my point, Keith. This whole town is dead. Stuck in the past. Everyone is just doing what they're told without questioning why. Where's the ambition? The sense of adventure? Are we still talking about basketball? <clears throat> How's your mom? <clears throat> she seems... distracted. Normally, she's so focused on her job. I mean, it's understandable. It's been almost a year since... And now she's planning to go away for the weekend, and she still won't tell me why. Yeah? She was definitely acting weird earlier. Maybe she's... lonely? You know what? You're right. I am? She shouldn't be alone right now. Actually, your dad told me they were meeting in the library. We're going to need supplies. Two of Mr. Bean's finest, please. To go, of course. Here is my payment in full. That's a nickel. Put the rest on my tab? Thanks for the pep talk, Keith. You always know what to say to make me feel better. Last stone. You want it? Thanks. <clears throat> Woohoo! Bullseye!
Keith was an excellent listener. Or maybe he just didn't speak much. Either way, Jenny really enjoyed their little talks. He was the only person who really seemed to understand her. Jenny biked briskly towards the library back on campus to surprise her mother. Nothing exciting ever happens here, she grumbled, unaware of the great adventure that lay in store just around the corner.